in this giant packet of papers. Um, but you take it, the announcement sheet, so that's the size, and make it a little bit smaller. Um, and you're just sitting out with the this and the other words the same, you're saying another thing from there. You also have the I apologize, my microphone, I thought it was on. We'll continue with the service. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. 
When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. We will read the portion of Psalm 86 in unison. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you, and you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, or anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant, and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin 
and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of our Lord. Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebel, how much more will they malign with those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. 
Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs on your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledge me, acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and one's foes will be member of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who lose their life those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace, peace, peace, and mercy are yours in the name of the triune God. Our second reading today and our gospel remind me of two different people who lived in the 1900s. Those are Rasputin and Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Two a little bit different people if you've heard about them before. Rasputin read this passage from Romans, and he believed that if he sinned more, then he would earn more grace, because he would be forgiven more. But he, but he also thought that if he sinned more, he would have... I don't know how to explain it, because I can't quite understand, but he would have extra grace. He would have more than you and I because he sinned and was forgiven. So that's what we call cheap grace. Have you ever heard that expression, cheap grace? Like you're going to go do something you know is maybe wrong or not good, but you say, well, God will forgive me. So then we have Dietrich Bonhoeffer, slightly different. And he didn't like what people called cheap grace. Um, he, he coined the phrase costly grace because he lived for God above all things, no matter what the cost was. He was a student in the U.S. He was from Germany, and he was a student in the U.S. at Union Theological Seminary in New York. And after Hitler began to rise in power, he felt like he was called to go back and, and speak out against the regime. He felt like he couldn't, he couldn't just escape and he couldn't just hide from what was going on, from what was happening to his people and his country. So he left uh, his post at the seminary and, and he returned to Germany. And pretty soon he, he became involved in one of the many plots to assassinate Hitler and he was caught. So he was imprisoned in a concentration camp. And in fact, he died in this con concentration camp um, in 1945, just two weeks before the United States Army reached, reached it. Justice does not always come quickly, as we see in his example. When we're called to do the right thing, it often does not mean an easy path, perhaps a, an easier decision at some times, but not an easier path. And it's always hard, or often hard, to know if what we are doing is right. 
it's not simply the right thing just because it's difficult and it's not the wrong thing just because it's easy. And Jesus warns us in this seemingly, seemingly cryptic and confusing way. Um, he says, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Now this, this sword is not uh, you know, a literal instrument that he's fighting with, because we see later in the book of Matthew, Peter has a sword, and he wants to... He wants to use it against one of the guards in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus says, no, no. So it's not about that. But it's not about bringing this easy little package of what it means to know God. Um, it's not about bringing something for us to follow that will automatically make our lives easy. And in this whole gospel, which has a lot in it to unpack, I hear Jesus saying, following me is not easy. But I also hear, do not fear. I also hear that when you give up your life, that we'll find it in God. Bonhoeffer said that we are not to simply bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice. We are to drive a spoke into the wheel itself. We don't just react to what is going on and, and put a Band-Aid on it. But we work to bring justice to all people. There's no quick fix. There's no quick fix for things like the environment um, or racism. There's no quick solution for so many things that we deal with in our world today. Bonhoeffer also said that Christianity stands or falls with its revolutionary protest against violence, arbitrariness, and pride of power, and with its plea for the weak. He said that Christians are doing too little to make these points clear. Christendom adjusts itself far too easily to the worship of power. And he said Christians should give more offense, shock the world far more than they are doing now. And Jesus is putting some fear into his disciples. It's hard for us to know what it was like to be, to be in a situation where following Jesus would put you against your mother or your father. Um, certainly there are, there are parallel situations in, in which we can relate, but we can't fully understand what it was like in that time. And the point's not to, to shock people or make them uncomfortable, but it's, it's to show us that this thing called uh, being a disciple, that following Jesus, is not easy. We're called to live out the gospel in our world, and that means always seeking justice, treating our neighbors as ourselves, discerning what is truth, and humbly knowing that we are not above one another. And all of those things could take a lifetime to figure out. One of my favorite um, images for God and, and um, kind of analogies comes from Narnia. Lucy, one of the, the little children that had found Narnia, um, was a little bit nervous about meeting Aslan because Aslan is is God in this world of Narnia. And these children are very brave because they find, they find this separate world once they go through a ward, an old wardrobe closet. And if I had gone through that and found snow, anything, any of it, I would have turned right around. Like, no way. And they go into it and they find out it's dangerous. But then they just go back again. And I would have just given up. Um, but they're brave children, right? And so Lucy, um, at this point, they had befriended uh, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver, and Lucy says to Mr. Beaver, I, I thought he was a man about Aslan. Is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. Safe, said Mr. Beaver. Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. 
and that reminds me of, of the, the God that we're dealing with. It's um, following God is not always the safe option, um, especially in those extreme examples we see like Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Um, but we know that following God is good. We know that God is good. That's the God we're dealing with. It's, it's not always comfortable or safe. It's not always easy to make decisions or to know or to trust the Spirit is here and that we're being led in the right direction. We're following a God that is like a, a wild lion at times, it seems, especially in this Gospel reading. He's not tame. And we don't always know where following Christ will lead us, but we know that God is good. Amen. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. These are the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Indwelling God, uphold us to be as you created us, people of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May the fruits of the Spirit blossom in us all. Wise Counselor, where intellect says impossible, open us to an audacious faith that trusts the ways of God. Where ego clenches, help us surrender to the miracle of divine grace. Beloved Comforter, lead us to the restoring salve of forgiveness. Soften us to a blessed vulnerability that we may welcome the confessions and tears of each other as well as our own. Teacher, 
prevent us from pitying the suffering or averting our gaze. So resuscitate our hearts with compassion that wherever need is, we may, may inhale love and exhale loving kindness. Revealer of truth, pierce the illusions tearing at the community of life. Deepen our sense of relationship in all things and ever so urgently awaken us to honor the sacred covenant with earth. God of all peoples and places, protect the children, women, and men caught in conflicts over immigration laws. We pray for families who are separated, for the imprisoned, and for those forced to live where they do not wish. We pray for the well-being of our new neighbors who give us the gift of their presence. Holy Advocate, in our common life, restore hope and a devotion to a more just society. Purge, purge from us fear, indifference, violence, and greed, that there may be peace. We pray for the enlightenment of all souls, especially Donald, our president, members of Congress, and leaders in every place. Great intercessor, uphold Pastor Kit in her time of discovery and renewal. Hear our prayers for Howard, Marcia, Luol, Lynn, Nell, Jim, Mary, Tamara, Catherine, Oscar, Ted, Marty, Emily, Barbara, Folu, Dixie Lee, Kevin, Rosemary, and Jean, and receive the concerns of people gathered. We offer thanks for the blessings of life, especially the celebration of John and Barbara Thurber's 55th wedding anniversary, for whom the altar flowers are given by John and Jenny Thurber. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's confess our sins against God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through Christ our Lord. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the whole power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Please be seated. Good morning. I am Vic Rausch, and I am Vestry Person of the Day. Yeah. The Vestry is the governing board of our church. If you have any questions about All Saints, please ask me. Here are some announcements for today. First, if you are visiting us with us today, please fill out a visitor card from the pew racks in front of you. Place it in the offering plate as it goes by. Looks like this. It says, we are glad you have come to worship with us today, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and <clears throat> after you fill it out, place it in the offering plate when it comes by. That's the only thing we're asking of our visitors today. And thank you for being with us. Right after the service, join us for coffee and fellowship and treats in the fellowship room, in the room directly below us. You can follow either set of stairs or take the elevator all the way down. Uh, next, an update. The Sanctuary Task Force is in discussion with the City of East Lansing about city code as it relates to our Sanctuary Church initiative. City officials earlier this month met with the task force and other vestry members and representatives of the Building and Grounds Committee to look at plans for a possible temporary shelter. Next announcement. You have an opportunity to help this summer at Advent House. Please contact Carol Swinehart if you can spare a couple of hours to help prepare and serve a nourishing lunch at this day shelter. And the opportunities are Saturdays, July 1st, which is next Saturday, August 5th, September 2. And you can get in contact with Carol through the uh, email or phone number in the bulletin, or you can see her after uh, the service. She's up here in the on the left side, left to me. So it just takes not even a couple hours, usually. And there's family fun ahead. All are welcome to bring your own picnic dinner and enjoy a Caroline concert on Wednesday, July 12 at 5.45 near Beaumont Tower on the MSU can campus. RSVP to Becky Beauregard. Again, her address is in the bulletin. And the last announcement, the Saturday Moms Group will take a break for the summer. The next meeting will be on Saturday, October 7, from 10 a.m. to noon. And when it resumes, it'll be the first Saturday of the month through the entire school year. Thank you for your attention. I also have uh, a personal announcement to share, um, something ha that has become official this past week. Um, Many of you know my wife Sarah is also a pastor and she has taken a call, a new call, in Cleveland, Ohio. So we will be moving. Um, so it's very bittersweet because I just adore all of you and I love, absolutely love being here. Um, but we'll be going back to Ohio, which is where we're from, and, and be near family and that kind of thing. So, um, so that'll be good. But. Um, We'll, we'll send you more details about um, my last days and things like that, and please feel free to get in touch and 
reach out. We can get coffee or, or dinner or something like that before I leave, but we'll give you more information. Um, and also, I know some people have, are wondering if Pastor Kit knew, and, and she did know that this was definitely a possibility. And so um, we've been sort of planning you know, for the possibility, and the Children, Youth, and, and Family Committee met this week, and we are, are already making sure there's steps in place to make sure things like EYC are covered, and we, and we have some great leaders, so in this transition, um, we're making sure those things are covered. So. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intended for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Dying, you destroyed our life. Christ Jesus, come and glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. for you, the people of God.
join me in the sending forth of our Eucharistic visitors. Neil and Sarah, in the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many, one body, because we all share in bread. Please join me in the post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food, the most precious body in the world, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. As you go, may peace of God be upon you and those you love and remain with you always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.